deja vu. Two years ago, he also unexpectedly found himself within grasp of the championship. Yeah, look, it's uh, uh, down to the wire and uh, we'll uh, approach it. We get straight into the action on the Toyota Dealer Rally Gauteng, and this is stage one of 12. Like all the other stages in the Bobsfontein area on the East Rand, it's a gravel stage over just less than 16 kilometers. Leaving the field in cloudy and damp conditions, championship leaders Serge Damso and Robert Paisley in their S2000 Castrol Toyota Run-X. At this point, the front runners still had mostly dry surface under wheel. Second in the championship, just four points down, Jan Habeck and Douglas Judd in their S2000 Volkswagen Polo. They were followed by teammates Hogan Fecken and Pierre Aris, also in with a chance of taking the title, 13 points behind the leaders. Reigning champions Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson in their works at BP Volkswagen Polo, only one point behind their teammates in the standings. Sassol Rally winners Johnny Gemmel and Peter Marsh in the second Castrol Toyota Run-X. Behind them on the road, Team Total Toyota Run-X pair Jean-Pierre Damso and Quibbers Frey. Making their S2000 debut, Class A7 champions Mark Cronier and Chris Birkin in the third works Castrol Toyota Run-X. Followed by privateers John and Douglas Williams in their Class S2000 Guma Polo. Well, the first race didn't go too badly and, um, you know, still trying to get into it. And uh, Ergen and Johnny Gemmel have set a, a quick pace already. So we'll have to saw, you know, see what's going to happen in the next few stages. I think at this stage we'll just go as hard as we can and uh, without taking too many risks and damaging anything and getting punches. So for now it's uh, go as hard as possible. We tied with Johnny Gemmel on this stage. Um, we had a very good stage and... Um, we're about 15 seconds quicker than Serge and Yanni, but uh, obviously they're fighting for the championship, so they might not be pushing so hard. But we had a very good run, yeah. Leading the Class N4 field on the road, Charles Wilkin and Greg Godrich in their Sassol Konica Minolta Subaru Impreza WRX. Production car championship leaders, Fissa Duplessis and Dave Lefkowitz in their Pertec Creepy Crawly Subaru Impreza WRX. Fernando Roida and Gerard Sneijman in the Team Total Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 9. So, Gemmel and Fecken shared the Stage 1 win, taking a joint early lead of 6 seconds over Kuhn, with Damso 8 seconds further back. Stage 2 was faster, if a little longer, and the scene was set for a gigantic four-way showdown. Damso needed to keep an eye on Habich, while Fecken and Kuhn had to go all out for a win. Fekin and Aris were confident about their steed and tackled stage two with gusto. Yeah, we had a good uh, stage, uh, no problems. Car's going very well, um, we actually we have no problems, nothing to complain about. On board with front runners Gemmel and Marsh. It just started raining, but not bad. In the cockpit now with Kuhn and Hodgson. Left two, 140. Right two, 100. Right one, left two, right one, 100. 100 left six, it's a long right eight. The six left, right eight, small cut. No, small cut. On the crest, left nine. On the crest, left nine. No cut. Right two. Right two. Three hundred. <coughs> left six opens into right one. To left six. Six left opens into right one. Two hundred. Stay right. Flat right two. Flat. It's a flat right two again. It's a long left two. 
flat here, long left two, right one, left one, into fork, right four. Fork, right fork, Tyson's cut, 70, before the tree, left nine. Before the tree, left nine. Left nine, fork, left three. Now you must fork left. Left three, fork left. It's the left eight, late. Turn right five. Turn right five. 60 is a left three in. Left three in. You know, difficult to find the road, but uh, it's quite it's quite fast and flying. I quite enjoyed it. We had a good stay. We got lost on the notes a little bit, which might have, might have cost us time, but for the rest of the car feels good. Mark Renier and Chris Birkin were running about 15 seconds off the pace in their first outing in the top class in the Sassol South African Rally Championship. They had dominated Class A7 to such a degree, winning all of the past seven events, that they'd been promoted to S2000 on this event in preparation for the full onslaught next year. Damso was going for a record equaling 11th title and possibly his 75th victory, but as always he was keeping an eye on the bigger picture and wasn't pushing too hard. Habich and Judd had to take five points off the Toyota crew to clinch the title, but disaster struck less than halfway into the stage. A puncture severely limited their pace and they lost about a minute on the leaders. Six k's in, about 11 k's from the end, we got a we just went quite sideways into like a loose sand and uh, just pulled the tyre off the rim. So, yeah, we had 11 k's with a flat wheel. Father and son pairing John and Douglas Williams from the Western Cape had been setting some impressive time throughout the season, but they seemed to be struggling for pace at this point. Defending production car champions Nicholas Ryan and Skolf van Heerden in the Bozal Subaru Impreza WRX had no choice but to go as hard as possible as they had a 16-point deficit to make up on the points leaders. Wilkin and Godrich also had nothing to lose as they were out of the championship after a seesaw 2007 campaign. It wasn't too bad but uh, we've got a fuel pump problem so the car's cutting out the whole time so we've got to flick the switches to override that so lost a bit of time at that stage but we'll be able to fix it now. Making a once-off comeback on this event, veteran Scott Berger and Richard Leake in their Class N4 Automark Subaru Impreza WRX. Also from the Western Cape, Paul Pfeiffer and Cindy Harding in their N4 Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 6. Rocky Reinecke and Christo Ackermann in their Subaru Impreza WRX making a comeback after an absence of three events. Diesel-powered four-wheel drive Dastic Volkswagen Golf of Hein Lauterhan and Johan van Amerwe has created a lot of interest in South African rallying this season. Production car title favourites Fisser Duplessis and Dave Lefkowitz were not taking any chances. Along with Kronje and Birken, they were the only crew to have finished all events in the points so far. No, we're enjoying it, but unfortunately we took a wrong road, so this stage doesn't even count for us. You know, we probably lost 30 seconds, I don't know. The roads are getting slippery now and uh, we've got to keep it tight because there are rocks next to the road but uh, I'm looking forward to the rest unfortunately this stage was a waste with that wrong slotting we didn't wrong slot, we thought we didn't, we turned around <laughs> conditions were indeed getting worse as the rain began pelting down Lola and Megan for Lark and the team totaled Subaru Impreza WRX the Subaru Bruma backed Subaru of locals Gary Burnt and Lohan Spies The first of the A7 cars, Christopher and Dean Riedlinghuis and their team total Toyota Runnex. With the title already won, they were looking at cementing their second place in the standings. Jens Hubert and Llewellyn Ferry in their class A7 Salmon backed a Volkswagen Polo. Adrian Karth and Duncan English in their A7 Net Connect Volkswagen Polo. Third, but only two points down on DeWitt and Riedlinghuis, Tony Ball and Alan Bissett in their Bulwer Park Volkswagen Golf. Class A5 champions Gugu Zulu and Carl Peskin were having their second outing in the Class A7 BP Volkswagen Polo. Barry Hroblar and Mike Burrows in the Class A7 Sassol Volkswagen Golf. Unfortunately, their rally would end in this stage after mechanical problems. 
A titanic battle was raging in class N3 with team totals Rodney Fasahi and Arnu Lechranzi in their Toyota Runnings a single point in the lead. Chasing them down were Mohamed Musa and Henry Dearlove in another team total Toyota Runnings. Stephen Wilkin and Gert Nienauber in their Panar back Volkswagen Polo were in with a remote chance of taking the Class A6 title. Eugene Lawrence and Eugene LaRue in their A6 team total Toyota Conquest were hoping for a good result after a disastrous season that had netted a single second place so far. Andre Klinwerk and Des de Fortier in their Class A5 EP Volkswagen City Golf. Claudio Piazza Musso and Greg Herica had taken the Sasselback Class A5 Toyota Yaris to its first class victory in the previous event and were looking for a strong finish to the season. Fekin and Aris went into a six second lead after winning stage two with Hubbig and Judd seemingly right out of the picture. Ryan and Van Heerden had taken the production car lead. In Class S2000, Hubbig and Judd were almost a minute and a half off the lead, exactly what the doctor ordered for Damso and Paisley. Damso Jr. had retired with engine trouble. Ryan and Van Heerden held a slender lead in N4, while in N3, Pissa and Lacranzi were also just ahead of Musa and Diela. In Class A7, Jabir and Ferri were well clear of De Witt and Riedlinghais. Wilkin and Nienaber led A6, and Klinvac and De Fortier were ahead in A5. Stage 3 was a tricky 15-kilometer affair that could easily catch anybody out, especially in the conditions which were beginning to deteriorate rapidly. Damso and Paisley would be the first to encounter the conditions. On board now with Kuhn and Hodgson. 90, left 3, is right 1, 50, long right 4, is turn half in right. Is turn half in right. Now turn half in right now. Go right. 50, left 9, is right 9. Is right 9. And long left 6. Long left 6. It's a fork right 1. Fork, fork right 1. Right 9 now. Go right 9. Right 9. Left 9. Left. Right 1. Right one, long left two, the long two, it's a right one, and fork right one is caution left nine. Caution left nine. Left nine. 150. 150. Cronier and Birkin. Fekin and Aris. Gemmel and Marsh. All girl team Lola and Megan Verlaak going strong. Pfeiffer and Harding. Lattegan and Van Merwe in the diesel golf. Burger and Leek. Duplessis and Lefkowitz. And on board now with production car leaders Ryan and Van Heerden. In the middle of the road, he do a two step and left, a few step and left, tight ends are right on the grass. A few step and left, yeah. Tight ends are right on the grass. 19. Left three, right one in. Left three, right one in. Long right four into the left two. Into the left right, right side and left side. Left two, left and right side and left side. 60. Left nine, right nine. Left nine, right nine. And long left six. Right nine and long left six. Left long left six. Into left one, into four, right one. Left one and four, right one. Into Caution right line cut. Right, right one and caution right line cut. Right line cut into left 70 right. Left 70 right into turn to left. Nine right, no cuts. Left nine, no cuts, no cuts. 
into the right one, long lift two opens, long lift two opens, into right two and four right two, into double four and four right two and into the double portion of left mine, left mine, rock on right, left mine, rock on right, G150. Wilkin and Godrich chasing hard. They had won twice, but had also suffered two major accidents in their first season in Class N4. Gevel and Marsh took their second stage win, but the big news was the retirement of Serge Damso and Robert Paisley on this stage due to broken suspension. Reuter and Sleiman were also casualties after numerous punctures and a broken jack. After the break, the title race... Gila Rally Gauteng was just less than 10 kilometres long, but the retirement of the championship leader and title favourite had signalled that no one could rest on their laurels. Hergen Fecken and Piri Aris knew that with the retirement of Damso and Paisley, they needed to up the pace to get to the front. Currently fourth overall, about a minute behind the leaders, they pushed hard, while at the same time treaded carefully not to go over the limit. Overall leaders Johnny Gemmel and Peter Marsh now had a clear role to play. Prevent the Volkswagen crews from taking maximum points and thus threatening the four-point lead that Damso still had in his pocket. Habich and Judd, who were languishing down in fifth overall, also needed to get to the front. At this point, their battle wasn't with Damso and Paisley anymore. If they scored five points, they would overtake the Toyota crew in the standings. But they also had to finish close to their teammates to beat them to the title. Privateers John and Douglas Williams were setting times similar to the Class N forerunners. They had had a bit of a mixed season so far with three finishes in the points, but also three non-finishes behind their name. They were hoping for a good result in the final round of the championship. Coming from a front-wheel drive to an all-wheel drive rally car takes some getting used to, but Mark Cronier and Chris Birkin were impressive, lying third overall at this point. Second place Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson again. 50. Turn half in right before a jump. Turn half in right here. Steady. Cautious jump down. Jump down with a single caution. 100. Flat jump. Flat jump. 150. Left one flat. Left one flat, 100, jump into left two, opens and continues over 400. Opens to 400 now. Before the grass, turn right eight. Before grass, turn right eight. Four here. 200 now. 100, turn right eight. Long left two, tightens and then opens. Open 200, turn left 8, turn left 8, 8 left, 300, around the pole, turn right 9. Kuhn and Hodgson had about 30 seconds to make up, because for them to retain the title, they also had to get to the front. This was a nail-biter starting to unfold. Nicholas Ryan and Skull van Heerden also had only one goal, to win class N4 and hope bad luck struck the points leaders. Left two into long left two continues. Left two into long left two continues. Into fourth right two. This is fourth right two over there. Fourth right two into left one right one in. Right two into left one right one in. 150 left into the maximum right line. At the bottom, at the bottom. The maximum right line to the Coming up, 100 meters, maximum right line, into a left two, into left two, into turn a Q tape on the right. So left two into a Q tape on the right over there.
one foot in. Maximum bump, 60, another maximum bump. And keep left around, jump and dip, keep left around, jump and dip coming up. Left around, jump and dip, keep this long left too, and double force and jump. Double force and jump coming up here, this is it. Into keep left around, jump and dip, left around, jump and dip. Into a left two, and force and jump and dip, this is the right nine. And immediate left six, immediate left six, tightens to nine, immediate left six, tightens to nine. Production car points leaders Fissa Duplessy and Dave Lefkowitz were lying fourth in class N4 at this point, which was quite sufficient for them to clinch the title. What they didn't need was a major mistake in the difficult conditions, so they were following the sensible approach. Charles Wilkin and Gabe Godrich had proven this season that they were incredibly fast, despite this being their debut year in this class. Were it not for the accident on the Sassel Rally and another one on the total, which led them to being absent on the next event, they could well have been challenging for the title. Scott Burger and Richard Leake, who've been competing since before many of the crews on this rally had been born, were still giving it stick. Amazingly, they were very close to the pace of the Class N4 front runner. Siblings Lola and Megan Villark in their team total Subaru Impreza WRX, affectionately known as the Rally Chicks, were running in the Class N4 midfield. Having enjoyed moderate success in their first attempt at the FIA African Rally Championship this year, they probably felt more at home with the familiar South African rally format. Fekin and Aris took their third stage victory and closed the gap to Kuhn and Hodgson, while Jan Habich and Douglas Judd were beginning to move up the order. Stage 5 was just over 11 kilometres in length, and with the rain continuing to come down, what had been a gravel road had long ago turned into mud. The front runners were still balanced on a knife edge. Fekin and Aris had about four seconds to make up on the third place Toyota crew, and still about a minute on the rally leaders. The difficulty was to balance aggression with caution. and Hodgson had given away some time to the leaders in the previous stage and were keen on making it up. Not only would it get them closer to the front, but it also put pressure on the leading Toyota crew. Gemmel and Marsh pushed hard, perhaps too hard sometimes. Hubbig and Judd still lying fifth. Cronier and Birkin had been doing an excellent job, but in this stage they would lose their third place. were dropped back by about another minute in this stage. Wilkin and Godrich kept the hammer down. They had taken a slim lead in N4. Just a few seconds down in second place in N4, defending champions Ryan and Van Heerden. Production car title favourites Duplessy and Lefkowitz got very close to our cameraman here. Still looking strong old timers Scott Burger and Richard Leake, currently third in N4. Fifth, Lola and Megan Verlark. Let's find out what conditions were like out there. Yeah, it's been erratic. It's been crazy today. You just got to aim the car straight and put your foot down and the back's going everywhere. It's so slippery. Uh, I think it, it's going to be just uh, a mission just to get to the end of today and tomorrow I think will be a bit drier. But it's great out there, it's fun, absolutely fun. I mean, just everywhere and it's like uh, Sky Electric. <laughs> We've got no pressure. This stage we did the same time as Nick. The one before we uh, lost two to him, the one before we took 10 from him. But we are about 40 seconds adrift because of that wrong slot we had. Um, and uh, I, I'm not going to take any chances. I also said so. If it's dry, I would have gone flat out. If it's wet, um, there's, if you make a mistake, it's exponential. You know, in the dry, if you make a mistake, you go a little bit wide. Yeah, you go off straight into the fields and you they won't get out. 
Chris DeWitt and Dean Redlinghouse had taken over the lead in Class A7. The front-wheel drive cars were really beginning to struggle in the muddy conditions. Tony Ball and Alan Bissett had dropped to third in Class A7. Fisaki and Lacranzi were on their way to clinching the N3 title after Musa crashed out on this stage. Atwell and Daw in their Toyota run -X. In Class A6, a close battle had developed with Sali de Toy and Gert Janse van Rensburg in their Team Total Toyota run -X. In the middle of it, trading faster stage times with Scott Burger Jr. and Armand de Toy. Still going strong and leading the A5 contingent, Claudio Piazzomoso and Greg Gierke in the Little Yaris. This is the first season of rallying for the car and it has plenty of potential, having now reached the required level of reliability. Notice the effect of the rain and cold on our camera lens. Andre Klinvac and Des de Fortier, second in A5 and struggling to keep the City Golf pointing in the right direction. Beckin and Aries took their fourth stage victory out of five, and both they and teammates Kuhn and Hodgson had closed the gap to rally leaders Gemmel and Marsh. The Toyota Cruise lead was now down to 23 seconds, with the top three covered by just more than 70 seconds. In N4, Wilkin and Godrich were ahead of Ryan and Van Heerden, with Fasaki and Lacranji clear of Michael Houghton and Henny Wurtis. In A7, Jaber and Faria had retaken the lead over De Witt and Redlinghaze, while Berger Jr. led A6 and Klingberg had gone to the top in A5. The final dirt stage of day one was the longest of the Toyota dealer rally Gauteng at almost 35 kilometers, and everybody knew that this one could turn the rally on its head. Rally spectators don't mind these kind of conditions as long as they can find a way of keeping warm and the action is hot. Even a disappointed Serge Damso was watching proceedings as Mark Cronier and Chris Birkin came past. They would drop a considerable amount of time in this stage. Johnny Gemmel and Peter Marsh would also lose time in this stage and they would lose their lead. We were leading and then uh, this last 32k we had a little bit of a problem there, lost some time to Enzo, he's in front I think 6 or 7, but still a long day tomorrow. Sensing an opportunity on this long stage, Hergen Fecken and Peri Aris put their heads down and took almost 40 seconds off the crew ahead of them to move into third overall. The bump on left, then 100. 100 bump on left, then 100, turn tight left 9, no cut, turn tight left 9, no cut. Yes, this is flutter. Flip now. Two hundred rough left four. Judd and Hubbich pushing hard with their title hopes still high. Guy Hodgson went even faster, covering the stage seven seconds quicker than anybody else. This gave them the overall lead by six seconds over the Toyota crew. We managed to take the lead now from Johnny Gemmel, and uh, it's a bit risky, you know, uh, not not really during the stage, but only on the braking under after long straights. You just cannot judge the braking distances. So we actually slid through a fence on the one uh, corner. Another midfield running crew in N4, Paul Pfeiffer and Cindy Harding. Just ahead of them in the standings, the rally chicks Lola and Megan Falark. Seeing their remote title chances slipping even further away, Nicholas Ryan and Scott Van Heerden. N4 leaders Charles Wilkin and Greg Godrich. Still driving tactically, points leader Fissa Duplessis and Dave Lethkowicz. Skullsberger Sr. and Richard Leake now fourth in N4. So 
Kuhn and Hodgson took their first stage victory of the event, with Habig and Fekin setting identical times, while the old-timers actually set the fastest N4 time. The final stage of day one was a spectator stage on time, the parking area of the K90 shopping centre in Boxburg. Rally crews know that this is mainly done to bring the spectacle closer to the people, and that although they can't really win much on a stage like this, they can lose everything. So let's get into the swing of things. Jan Habich and Johnny Gemmel set identical times on this stage to share the win. But in the overall scheme of things, it meant that Kuhn went to bed with a slender two-second lead and a full day's rallying to go. After the break, conditions get even worse. Our cameramen brave the elements and dodge assassination attempts from some of the... Welcome back. Day two of the Toyota dealer rally Gauteng, and because of the conditions, the organizers had to shorten the route from 14 to 12 stages. Stage eight was a repeat of stage one. We joined the first crew on the road, Mark Cronier and Chris Birkin, in the fifth place to S2000 Castrol Toyota Runnix. Two, one, go. Two go wide right, hip and lift, bump, narrow gate. Watch over here, bump, narrow gate. Bump narrow gate, hip and lift. Hip and then right two. Right two. T100, left two, right two, tighten four. Right two, tighten six. Right two, tighten six. Right four at the mound there. Right four. Right four, very rough, left eight. Right four, very rough, left eight. Uh, it's beached. The car was beached and it would take them half an hour to get it going again. After continuous rain overnight, the surface had become treacherous. And one thing was for sure, many more crews would be caught out. Here, John and Douglas Williams in their S2000 Guma Volkswagen Polo, 10th overnight. Jan Habik and Douglas Judd, 4th overnight in the works BP Volkswagen Polo. Johnny Gebel and Peter Marsh in the works Castrol Toyota Runnix gave up 20 seconds in this stage. While Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson in the works BP Volkswagen Polo stretched their overall lead by 15 seconds. That was the first of the close chase for our cameraman. Hergen Fecken and Pierre Uri's third overnight took yet another stage victory and closed to within four seconds of the Toyota crew. Paul Pfeiffer and Cindy Harding had been struggling in the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 6 the previous day, but were going better at this point. Lola and Megan Vallark in their team Total Subaru Impreza WRX fit an N4 overnight. The Bozal Subaru Impreza of Nick Ryan and Skull van Heerden, second in N4 overnight. Third in N4 and still on course for the title, Fisser Duplessis and Dave Leskovitz in the Pertec Creepy Crawly Subaru Impreza WRX. Leading the production car category, Charles Wilkin and Greg Godridge in the Sapphire Konica Minolta Subaru Impreza WRX. Second in Class A7 overnight, Tien Shubad and Llewellyn Fourie in the Slalom Volkswagen Polo. Tony Ball and Alan Bissett in their Bulba Park Volkswagen Golf, third in Class A7 overnight. Class A7 leaders by almost two minutes overnight, Christovit and Dean Riedlingais in their Team Total Toyota Runnix. Second in Class N3 overnight, the Team Total Toyota Runnix of Rodney Vistachi and Arnulle Granzi. 
leading class N3 by 26 seconds overnight, Michael Houghton and Henny Wooters in their team total Toyota running. Eugene Lawrence and Eugene LaRue had dropped well off the pace in class A6 in their team total Toyota Conquest. They were fourth in class overnight. Sally de Toy and Gert Janssen van Rensburg in their team total Toyota Runex, trailing the class A6 leaders by just 10 seconds, but simply not getting any traction in these conditions. Shane Williams and Jonathan Bright in their class A5 Guma City Golf, 29th out of the 36 remaining cars and 4th in class. Class A5 leaders Claudio Piazzo Musso and Greg Hierica in the Sassel Toyota Yaris. Their overnight lead, however, was a mere 16 seconds. The fifth stage win took Fekin and Aries to the verge of third overall, while Duplessis and Lechovic began to make their presence felt in N4. In S2000 and overall, Kuhn held a 17-second lead over Gemmel, with Fekin just four seconds back, and Hubbig another two minutes down. Kronier and Birken rejoined, but way behind. In N4, Wilkin and Godrich held a comfortable lead over Ryan and Van Heerden, while Houghton and Boertus stretched their lead in N3. Stewart and Riedling Hayes were well ahead in A7. Detoy had taken over the A6 lead after the demise of Skalsberger Jr., while Piazza Musso was ahead in A5. Stage 9 was the first running of the Super Special on the Karula Rally Star Grounds. Two cars at a time in a direct shootout on a route incorporating a short and a long loop and a crossover. The atrocious weather conditions didn't dampen the spirit among the spectators as the first two cars into the stage. Mark Cronier and Chris Birkin versus Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson set off. The polo beat the run by a comfortable seven seconds. Next up, teammates Hergen Fecken and Piri Aris against Jan Habich and Douglas Judd. <laughs> Fecken won this stage as well, going five seconds faster than his teammate. John and Douglas Williams took on Johnny Gemmel and Peter Marsh. Not surprisingly, the works crew went faster, but by only three seconds. In the first of the end for shootouts, Nicholas Ryan and Scott Van Yerden against Charles Wilkin and Greg Godridge. Ryan by six seconds. Second and Aris drew level second with Gemmel and Marsh after winning this stage. They six out of nine, while Cronier and Birkin began their long climb back up the order. After the break, the final sting in the tail, and champions are crowned. The Toyota dealer Rally Gauteng was a repeat of the morning's first stage, and by now the surface had been thoroughly messed up. It was going to be a tough challenge for man and machine. Beckett and Aris now smelling the possibility of challenging for victory, which is what they would need, plus some bad luck from their teammates to take the overall title. Kuhn and Hodgson, who also needed to win, were struggling in the conditions and dropped five seconds to Fekin and Aris in this stage. Gemmel and Marsh would also lose almost half a minute in this stage and drop to third. Hubbig and Judd knew they could hold on to their fourth place and they would be crowned 2007 champions, but they still had a long way to go. Cronier and Birkin would not play any role in the outcome of the championship fight, having dropped to just inside the top 20 after their mishap in the morning's first stage. Still, they were in a fighting mood.
Williams pairing still going strong and inside the top 10 and fifth in S2000. Uh, yeah, these conditions are challenging. They uh, require a lot of concentration, and uh, we hit a branch with uh, damage to our front windscreen, so half of the windscreen I can't see through. makes it very difficult to drive, especially when you get the mud on the windscreen, the wipers don't work properly either. So, you know, we're close to the end of the event. Um, championships pretty much still open with an outside chance. Uh, we're leading only by 15 seconds at the moment, so 30 kilometer stage waiting for us and it's really slippery out there. You know, it's difficult to judge how fast you want to drive because uh, uh, coming down a straight takes you about two kilometers from 200 to stop the car. And it's really just, uh, sometimes the car cuts out, so you back on the starter button trying to start the car and looking for gears, a bit chaos inside there. Yeah, we had a bit of a slow start and a uh, you know, couple of uh, difficulties with punches and so on, but I think we were pushing too hard probably in the beginning. Um, no, after surgery and out, then obviously things calm down a bit and uh, we've, we're holding our position. All we need to do is finish uh, better than six, so that's what we're currently doing. Apart from their earlier fuel pump problems, Wilkin and Godridge have had a good run and were looking at a comfortable Class N4 victory and equaling their best overall finish of the year in fifth. Reinen van Jerden had given it their all, but a successful title defence was slowly slipping from their grasp. Despite the four-wheel drive capabilities of these N4 cars, they were struggling for grip. Here are third-placed crew and title favourites, Fissa Duplessis and Dave Lefkowitz. Still going strong and looking at their fourth finish of the season, Lola and Megan Verlark. After a period this season marred by health problems, Paul Pfeiffer and Cindy Harding were looking at a solid result. After their seventh stage win, Fekin and Uddies edged away from Gebel and Marsh and closer to leaders Kuhn and Hodgson, while Wilkin and Godrich cemented their lead in N4. The penultimate stage was a repeat of the long 35 km stage six of the previous day. With the finish tantalizingly close, crews had to be wide awake for a late error. Kuhn and Hodgson had a choice. Manage their pace and hold on to their lead over their teammates, or go hard and try to nail down the advantage. From the outside, they seem to have chosen a sensible approach. Fekin and Uri's, on the other hand, had nothing to lose and were going for it. <laughs> Drama struck when both Kun and Fekin ran into engine trouble. Kun was out, but Fekin could limp home, losing about eight minutes in the process. John and Douglas Williams now elevated to seventh overall and fourth in S2000. Cronier and Birkin were still going strong. The two had no doubt shown that they had the speed to be competitive in this class, which will certainly spice things up in 2008. Elevated to second overall and virtually assured of the title, Hubbig and Judd only had to make the finish. All of this had elevated Gemmel and Marsh back to the front, and they promptly went on to win the stage, their fourth of the event. With only one more stage to go, they were looking good for their second overall victory of the season, and this time it would not be on a technicality as on the Saffle Rally earlier this season. Paul Pfeiffer and Cindy Harding, now 11th overall and 5th in N4. The Rally Chicks were up to 8th overall and 4th in N4.
Ryan and Van Heerden, lying fifth overall and second in N4. Production car champions elect Duplessis and Lefkowitz, sixth overall and third in N4. Let's join them on board and see how they deal with the treacherous conditions. Eight. 70 right one. Nice and left and left, right and right. Left and left, open, left and left, right and left. Right. Open, left and left, right and right. Into right there. Wilkin and Godrich had been elevated to fourth overall, their best position of the season, and were leading N4 comfortably. Christovit and Dean Redlingheit had built a comfortable lead in the A7 battle, and were looking at their first class win of the season. Hubert and Furi were about two minutes behind in second place. Gemmel and Marsh celebrated the stage victory, 16 seconds clear of Habich and Judd, but more importantly, they were back in the lead. The final stage was a rerun of the Super Special, and for the 29 surviving crews, the end couldn't come soon enough. Let's rock and roll! Judd went fastest on this stage, taking their second of the event by six seconds from the recovering Fekin and Uris, while Wilkin and Godrich beat the rest of the N4 field. Overall, and in S2000, Gemmel and Marsh clinched their victory more than two minutes ahead of Hubbig and Judd, with Fekin and Uris remaining on the podium. Wilkin and Godrich took their third production car victory of the season, while Houghton and Wurtis won class N3 the second time ahead of champions Vasaki and Lachransi. De Witt and Redlinghuis took the A7 victory, De Toy and Jans van Rensburg A6 for the third time, and Piazza Musso and Gerike their second consecutive A5 win. This morning the guys got away from us a little bit in the mud. Uh, we seem to have had some sort of problem, but the last uh, 32k before this one, we were 40 seconds by Nenzo, and then we saw him three-quarter way through the stage. And then we got to the time control at service, also Fekin had a problem, so we jumped into first. Now we just had this 1K to do, and that's it. So, Toyota Rally, Toyota Victory, great. Absolutely brilliant rally for Toyota, and for the crowds here in, uh, on the East Strand, it's been really outstanding. Uh, most of us are covered in mud, I've just taken my jacket off, so everybody can't see that on me, but it's... Uh, Johnny Gemmel comes from this area, he's the winner from the East Strand, um, he's the winner for Toyota his second rally in his first year, so we are really, really happy. Jan Hubbick and Douglas Judd clinched their sixth national rally title by 10 points, and Duplessis and Lefkowitz took their first production car title. Yeah, it was uh, quite a, a tough season for us, you know, um, 
not everything went smoothly, but apart from uh, you know having a couple of punches now and then, uh, the car performed very well. I think the team worked very hard, and uh, they also deserved the win. And uh, yeah, we're glad. It's uh, great to do an any championship, and uh, you know Douglas did a good job during the season as well. And uh, yeah, we're very happy. And while Jan and Doug celebrated, we caught up with a new production car champion. No, it's a great feeling. Uh, I can tell you it's not easy. And it's a different temperament you need to go right through the air and win a championship. You know, I, uh, I knew if I was going to go flat out, I was going to run risk, uh, risks. And uh, I, I put foot where I had to in, in certain rallies uh, to get ahead of some guys for a few stages. And, uh, and, it, and it paid on. Hope wrecker. At the race host headquarters in the town of Leidenburg, drivers...